So by joining OMA, especially as a startup, we were able to get involved with the whole device management community. So the ecosystem of operators and vendors involved in device management, and then really learn how we can apply our technology to that problem. So we were able to come in to the device management space and um, bring in the set of requirements we had from customers and partners around um, managing lightweight Internet of Things devices. And we could accomplish a new enabler. So together with other interested OMA members, um, we started and, and finished an enabler specification, which is now in approval at, at the OMA. And that took um, just over a year. So it was a very fast process compared to many SDOs. Yeah, the Explorer membership was a really good way to start for us because especially as a startup or an SME, um, it's a big risk to go and join an alliance, put the uh, travel and manpower resources behind it if you're not sure that you can really accomplish something. So the Explorer membership let us get our, get our feet wet. Um, we could come to a few meetings, start contributing, see if other people believed in what, what we believed in, and then go on with a full membership. So it worked, worked perfectly for us. So OMA is in, organized into working groups, um, is where the actual technical work gets done. And the way we've actually operated is, is each member um, works towards a, a new work item. And the requirement document really gives the direction for the technical, the technical specification. Once that requirement document's done, um, the work is really about contributing pieces of that technical specification. So each member will contribute a piece, it'll be discussed, you'll combine ideas with other contributions, and eventually each contribution is approved. That gets put together by an editor into a technical specification, which eventually is finalized, comment rounds are done, and then approved. <laughs> In terms of OMA, the, we obviously we use the, the um, GNSS aiding, the supple system that was standardised. And the benefits for us are that that standardised pipe work allows us to scale across multiple devices and platforms. We also see activity in the future where standardisation for the delivery of indoor maps and information such as how high is the, the ceiling, 
um, you know, what is the height for each floor change. The standardization of that is going to improve the user, the end user experience. So we're quite excited to see that OMA is getting involved in this and that people like OpenGML are bringing um, proposals for standards to the table. Yeah. Standards are very important and OMA has played a very significant role in uh, providing technologies and standards which, with which you can manage uh, devices over the air. Um, it, there are going to be lots of these devices and unless there is a standards in place, there are going to be a chaos. There will be a lot of vertical solutions and uh, it, will, it will hamper the growth of the industry as a general. So um, being here working with OMA has helped us in making sure that all the devices which are OMA compliant can be managed easily with our server. Uh, we do interoperability with almost all the vendors, uh, including Samsung, LG, uh, and people who make uh, clients like Redbend, Caffeinated Turtle. So all these uh, ecosystem partners of ours work with us on, with our scalable multi-tenancy product, and they provide the clients on these devices, so we have a very, uh, very comprehensive uh, device uh, certification uh, program, which is used by all the OEMs and all the devices around the globe. Standards are critical. They really, they're what allow for proven tested means to be able to connect to networks, to connect devices to one another, to interoperate with each other, to, um, to communicate across networks. Right, if everything was protocol, I remember the very early days of, of cellular coverage, it was really bad. You couldn't roam from one network to another. And so, you, you know, the carriers are driving these standards. We've been an active member of the Open Mobile Alliance for over 10 years now. Um, all of our code, it's in our DNA. It's what we do. And we're bringing, we feel there's a rich opportunity for us to play in the space between the OEMs and the carriers that just extends this ecosystem and provides a rich avenue for new monetization. Uh, lightweight M2M uh, protocol is uh, important because of uh, lack of uh, uh, remote device management solution for the M2M and Internet of Things market. Uh, there are obviously existing solutions like TR069 which is available in the uh, wireline space historically developed by Broadband Forum etc etc and then equivalent is uh, OMADM uh, protocol for managing mobile phones. Both of them are very, very chatty and very demanding in terms of uh, bandwidth to deliver the remote device management. And with this new wave of machine-to-machine -machine, uh, devices and Internet of Things devices, which are very constrained in terms of resources that they can or that they have to uh, do the device management. So the protocol was developed with the aim for uh, uh, optimum, uh, efficient, secure uh, protocol to manage these millions and billions of devices that are coming to the, uh, on air to be connected to the Internet.